The Durafuse Frames component will have a quick video like you're watching right now. There will be details, the versions, and then you'll pick what version that you're going to use, 20 or 21, and then you will install the plugin. Once that's finished, then you can click into modeling. To add a Durafuse component to SDS2, you'll want to look at your elevation view. So we're going to start with the DF103 down in the bottom left. And then you're going to want to look at your DF uh, one-sided connections, your two-sided connections, and then you're also going to want to look at your plate and beam end schedule to create this Durafuse component inside of SDS2. To add the Durafuse component, select the column and then add the Durafuse component that's listed after the install. You'll want to make sure that your elevation view is correct to make sure that the beam is at that elevation view. Otherwise, it will say that there is no connection. We do have one-sided and two-sided connections and the connection side of near side and far side. I'm plugging in all the values from my one-sided connection. You will see up above for the T4 through the T7 for the plate thickness. We do have a note there for the fuse plate thickness, top plate thickness, and bridge plate to be used T2. And then the horizontal shear plate will be 0.6 times W4. Now I'm going in to my top plate settings and then typing in my fuse plate dimensions from that second table. Once you have all the parameters plugged in, then you can save this as a form. This will help so you don't have to continuously type in all the parameters for this job. Once you save it as a form, then you can apply it throughout the job. The component will remember the last fields that were applied if the modeling session is still running. So when I add the Durafuse component again, it does remember everything. And then I'm just gonna change it to the near side connection. Another way to add the Durafuse component, since I added it or since I installed it, the Durafuse component can also be added to my toolbar. So there are a few different ways to add the Durafuse component inside of the job. I already had these forms created, so I looked at my elevation view and DF203 I can apply. You will see now that it is set to two-sided. I can ask also add these to multiple members at a time. It already remembered that DF203. So I already went and added them on my second floor. Now going up to my third floor, as you can see, it does not say that there is any connection type that I can apply, but I do see the beam is actually at 71 foot six. So I need to just come into the column for the component and change that elevation view to 71 foot six. If you need to change the elevation view, you'll wanna do this after you add the form because the form will remember the elevation view that was set. Now that I have all of those added in there, you can see that it saved a lot of time instead of modeling those by hand. Now I can move on to my drawings. We did work with Durafuse to create templates, so you will wanna add these with templates or detail them with templates. 
You can see the column with all of the dimensions applied that we worked with deer fuse on. There's section views over on the right hand side and every dimension that was needed. We can also turn this to members and detail the top plate since these are miscellaneous members as well. We have created templates for the top plate here. And then we also have created templates for the fuse plate, which will indicate specific radius callouts, notes, and a hatch plate, which will indicate the protected region.